Welcome back to our summer stash dive episode two. And this is the one where I'm getting started with the back of my sweater. So I'm wearing the original one I made. You can see here, it's really wide, but short, which was how it was designed. However, it did grow widthwise as I was working on it. And part of that was the yarn that I chose because it's a superwash yarn and I was knitting it on a fairly loose needle so that it meant that as I started knitting more and more stitches um, and the you know the what I did with the swatch which was just going to be about five inches wide it tended to be a little bit tighter and it kept it, it didn't show it stretching as much but with the stockinette stitch that's knit, knit a little bit more loosely once it's being knit in very long rows you're first of all relaxing into the knitting so it's going to loosen up a little but also when worn it's going to want to open up a little bit more and i've actually discovered the very same thing with my linen what i measured and what i checked is actually smaller than what i'm getting on my needles these big long rows in linen i'm finding that my gauge is loosening up and up a little and the linen itself is quite heavy. So I'm actually working, even though I said I was going to make it a little bit smaller, as I'm working away on it, I'm actually discovering that when I lay it down, it's the same width as this. So if that is happening to you, you've got two decisions. Either you're like, I'm actually okay with it being a little bit oversized, which I actually am, because it's the same size as this, which I wear all the time, or else you have to opt to go and rip it out. But if at this stage once you've got like you can't judge initially but once you've gone a couple of inches into your work on the back take your measuring tape out and measure and check what it's looking like against what you're expecting to get so that's that's the main thing i'll tell you as you're working through here so what we're going to do today then is you're going to do your cast on and i'm doing a cable cast on because i don't know if i'm going to leave the neck open or not and the cable cast on forms a cast on that's got a little bit of stretch but not too much so it will hold the shape but it also looks really nice so that will give me the option of leaving it open or raw if I want to in all likelihood I'll probably pick it up and do some very simple um, neck edging or maybe it'll end up too open again like this and I end up putting a bigger ribbing on so having that kind of a nice cast on allows me to have those options second thing is we're going to cast on put markers for where you're going to have each side of your neck and the reason they're in there's two reasons first one is that when you come back you're going to want to know where the neck edges are to be able to pick up the front and the second one is to do our short row shoulder shaping so when you've got a shoulder like this the top of the shoulder is up here and it slopes down and in order to make that fit the body well, you want this part to be higher. And the easiest way to do that is with German short rows or with short rows in general, where you start with more or less the middle of the neck, then working three quarters to an inch. That can vary depending on the actual spacing you want, make it working them out further and further in each direction. So that's what I did for the shoulders. And then at that point, I knit straight down to the armhole depth that I wanted. So that's what I've done here. I've done my cast on. I put the markers in at the top and I did come back and put in another, where's the second one? There should be a second one over here. We go. The other one over here. And these were where I had centered the side of my neck. And these are also where I may come back and opt to change those, but they give me the center so I don't have to go recalculating, making sure I know where it is. Because I might end up stepping this in a little because my gauge is a little different. And if I don't want the neck as open, I'm gonna want less stitches. So I'm gonna keep going as I am with this, go down to the armhole depth that I want. Before I start the front of it, I will double check my gauge so that my neck opening is going to be matching the gauge that I've actually got on my needles with this larger size. But that's for the next session of the stash dive knit along. For now, you'll have got your gauge, you'll have picked your yarn, and it's time to just get started on starting off the back of the body. Once you've got the back of your body done, you may want to weigh it, check how much yarn it's using, and then from there, depending on what yarn you're using, whether you're doing it from stash or whether you want to check if you've got enough yarn, it'll give you an idea of how much yarn you're going to use for all of it. But to get those details, you can jump into the original stash dive, 
where I had done lots of calculations in terms of stripes and how much yarn I used for each section. This time round, I am just going to make it easy for myself. And if I need another ball of this, I'm just going to grab it from the shop. So simplifying it. And then the only place I'm going to bring in that final yarn is kind of towards the ends of the body, maybe doing some stripes and into the sleeves. But for now, come on in and let's take a look at how I'm actually going to go do all the different steps for starting the back of my body. I'm starting with my cast on. So I'm gonna, let me turn the page over here, show you what I'm doing here. Cause this one we're looking from the top down, but it's really from the bottom up. So I've cast on, move it up here, all across here, which was 120 stitches for the full width of my shoulders. And I've put in markers here with 38 stitches here and 38 stitches here where I've got 44 in the middle. Now I've used a cable cast on across here which I'll show you and the reason I use the cable cast on is cable cast on forms a really nice cast on method that has a little bit of stretch but it doesn't stretch out of shape too much so it felt like if I ended up leaving the neck exposed, which I don't know if I will be doing, but it leaves the option open because I've got a nice cast and I like the way it looks. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is short rows. So it'll be centered around the middle of these, which we want the highest part, and you'll be going back and forth. So the first row you'll knit as far as here, and then I'm gonna go, for me, I want to make my short rows every five stitches. So I'll do five stitches beyond that. I'll turn my work and then I'll come back over here to the marker here and then work five more stitches, turn my work. So the next time when I come back here, you'll have this double stitch in here. So I'll work that as a single stitch and then I'll work plus five more. So I'm gonna keep doing back and forth like that, which I will show you, I'll show you both sides. I'm gonna use German short rows, but you can use your method, your own method. So first of all, let me move this to the side here. I'm going to show you how to do the cable cast on and you'll see as I was going I also stuck markers on here each time like when I did 38 stitches I put one on and when I reached 44 I put one on because I found I always find it easier to place markers as I'm going so that I don't lose track of what I'm doing when I've got a lot of stitches to cast on but now back to our cable cast on so we're going to come in between these two stitches wriggle in between the two you have to be careful with See with linen, it tends to split open. So when you do a cable cast on and pull it through, if you've only snagged some of the stitches, you might have to undo it and just come back again. Let me move over so you can actually see it and pull it through. So as you go in here, when you pull this through, just make sure that you've got all of the loops. So that's number two. So number three, you go in between the two stitches. You don't want to snag anything. Then when you pull this through, you want to go ahead and burn it from the front and pop it on the needle. Come on in through, pull this through and pop this on the needle. When you tighten it up, you can see I actually usually kind of put my finger in between here to tighten it up enough that it's not going to leave a big gap under here, but loose enough that when you need to go in between, there's enough room to go in. So, so that's usually my criteria is that I could easily go in, but that I don't have an extra gap. So now I'm going to go ahead and knit all the way over to here. And then I will knit four more stitches and I will show you how to do that German short row turn. So I've knit all the way across both of my neck markers here. And I've now knit for my size and for my gauge, I'm doing five stitches over. So a little bit less than one inch, but that's gonna vary by how sloped you want. I decided five stitches is gonna be my short row turns. So I've knit five stitches past that second marker. And to do a German short row, I'm going to turn my work and make sure the yarn is facing me, which it already is. Slip the stitch from the left needle to the right needle, and then grab this stitch and lift it up and over. You see what you're doing is there are both legs of the stitch below. When you pull this up, you're bringing both legs up. You can actually see how I can pull this really snug. So you want that pretty snug because that's gonna stop you having a loose gap. So the next stitch here is gonna be purl, which means that my yarn's in the wrong place. I'm gonna make sure that double stitch stays in place, pull this in front and I'll begin purling. 
Now, if you have a hard time spotting those double stitches, you might want to stick a marker on here so that you're not going to miss it when you come back. I feel fairly confident I'll be able to spot it, so I'm going to live dangerously and just leave that double stitch as it is. So I'm going to purl all the way back here to pass the second marker because this is our neck. When I say neck, it's between these two markers. So pass five stitches past here and I'm going to turn around again and I'll come back and see you there and I'll show you what that double stitch looks like on the other side. I'm now on to my next short row. So I've gone five stitches past that marker, the neck marker again on the wrong side row. I turn my work around. This time you can see your yarns in the wrong place. So we want the yarn towards you. Just bring it up towards you. Slip the stitch from the left needle to the right needle and just like before, grab that and pull it up and over. So there you've got your double stitch. My yarn's now on the right side, so I'll snug that up and I'm just going to knit on. So I will, before I finish off my short rows, I'll show you how I resolve that double stitch and how many stitches I'm going to count beyond that as well. I am approaching the double stitch that I had done before. So remember the last time it was weird worked five and then turned and worked double stitch. So here was my marker and I've got one, two, three. Here is four. And because the stitch I turned and made the double stitch was that fifth one, the fifth stitch after my marker here is going to be this funny looking double stitch. And when you encounter it, you just treat that as a single stitch. So on this side, it's knit, so we'll knit together. If you're in the wrong side, it'll be purl. So literally go into both legs of the stitch like this and knit it as one single stitch. So on the front, it'll look fine. There'll be a little bump on the back. And then I'm just going to knit five more. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll turn around, I go back to the wrong side and do that. Come back and the next time round, I'll work an extra five. And then the next time after that, I'll work another five. Uh, another one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And that's pretty much probably where I leave it. I think at the end is I will, oh, I'll twist it around here. Um, I'll probably stop at that point, but that's up to you. You can maybe add another one in if you want to, but I think I'd be happy with it ending there. You can see how the middle of that is going to grow. So it's going to create like a higher neck in the back and a slope to the shoulder. So that's, that's why we're doing it. Um, you want to have the middle of the back a little bit higher. So I'm gonna continue on with this. And then once that's finished, I'll just knit straight down, but I will stop and show you what that slope looks like. Once the I have finished the short row section right now and I'm just pinning out a small bit to let you see what that looks like. Now, should really, and I probably will uh, in a little bit, get a, um, a cord, another cord or something where I can stretch these out so I can kind of check the width as well. This part here was my cast on and these are the two markers indicating my neck. And so that's going to be the tallest bit here. So you can see how wide it is there. So this is the top part of my neck where it's the top of my shoulders. And then when I get down over here to the very edge, which is the armhole edge, there's only a couple, there's only one row worked here. We haven't really worked anything yet. So that's going to show you the shoulder slope. So the more short rows you fit in, as in the closer you put the spacing of these, the more sloped that shoulder is going to be. So if you want a very sloped shoulder, then what you're gonna to want to do is move those turns closer to each other so you've got much, much more rows worked as you're going through. So for me, it was every five stitches, which is just under an inch where I'm turning. So you can use that as a gauge and it's going to, the number of stitches between them is going to vary a little depending on your gauge. I've got these two as well here. And the reason I've got those is when I go to pick up the front, I'm going to want to know where my neck is. So because this is more or less a straight line here, there's no real indicator. So I'm just going to pull this off. Let me pull this out here. So you see this marker here. So up along through this line is going to be where I want the edge of my neck to be. So I'm going to put a marker right here so that when I come back, later to go pick up stitches for my shoulder. I'll know I start there and work my way out and I'll do the same thing over here. So this will make life much, much easier for you when you're coming back because you're not guessing as to where you are. 
So let's open this up. So it's the middle of this here is the column of stitches that I want my neck to, to start at, so right here. So that'll mean that this part is going to be the neck. So even when you're trying it on, you'll know exactly where that is. And these are going to be the stitches that you pick up for this side. And these will be the stitches that you pick up for this side. So that's why I'm putting those in here. So I, you can see I've got a fairly short needle here. Um, I think it might be 42 inches long, 42 or 20, 22, 24, something like that. Yep, it's 20 to 22. So that's why my stitches are kind of wanting to slip off because I'm, that's roughly around the width that I'm working or it may be a little bit more. So I'm gonna continue on here now. This is going to be my armhole opening. So basically this is where I will measure from the outside edge here, not the middle. Those short rows, you're not going to measure because that's the top of it. This is the armhole opening. And each of these is going to be an inch. So it's going to be at least seven inches, maybe more like seven and a half. I'm going to get to seven and I'll put this on the top of my shoulder and I'll kind of measure to see what I think lengthwise. And then I'll determine whether I'm going to work further, but I know it's going to be at least seven inches. Um, and then I might decide to have a slightly bigger armhole opening a bit oversized, but I'm going to play it by ear and see how I'm going with that. So right now I've just got lots of stockinette stitch knitting to work just back and forth in rows. Music 